Hi everyone, this is Lulu from As You Wish Pottery. In this video, we'll be painting this adorable sunflower platter. As always, all of our supplies will be listed in our lesson plan, so feel free to grab that before we get started. Okay, so we will begin this project by using a large square brush to paint the background of our platter with messy coats of pale blue and Tahiti teal. Okay, so to create the messy strokes, we're going to use um, our large square brush and we're gonna load it perpendicular to the paint. So we're gonna just dip our brush straight into the paint and I'm gonna start with my pale blue, but you can actually start with either of the two blue colors that you're using. Um, and the idea is to fill in as much of that background as you can with one color. And then once you're done with that one color, you're gonna load the same brush onto the other color. Um, for my, for this case, it's going to be that Tahiti teal. And I'm just going to make as many messy strokes as I can onto the surface, trying to cover as much the ground um, as I can with one color and then going in and adding um, other layers around the platter with the other color. Here I'm just adding one more layer of just messy strokes with pale blue. This is just to soften a little bit of that Tahiti teal and make it a little bit more of a pale color so the background all sits in really nice um, underneath the flowers that we're going to paint on top. Now we're going to set our platter aside to dry and then we're going to use our pencil to trace the image on the lesson plan onto tissue paper. And to do that, all you gotta do is place the tissue sheet on top of the printed image and follow along the lines with a pencil. Okay, once you're done, we're going to place the tissue sheet um, over the platter and align it as you want. Um, then we're going to use a marker to transfer over the lines by retracing all the lines we traced with the pencil, but now we're doing it with the marker on top of the platter. Um, and this is just going to transfer over the design. Remember that the marker lines disappear after the platter has been fired, so this is just for us to know where things are going to be before we paint them. Before I start painting, I like to make sure that uh, I connect any ends that need to be connected. So what I'm doing is just using my pencil to kind of finish some lines. So just in case if your traceable image didn't fit correctly or whatnot, or there's some things that you want to adjust, this is the perfect time to do that with the pencil. Okay, so with the small brush, we're going to paint uh, the flowers, the large flowers, using two heavy coats of water yolk. And I'm painting the petals of these flowers, so I'm doing two, he two heavy coats as well. So what that means is I'm going to paint one of the flowers one time, then I'm going to move on and paint the other ones one time as well. And in the meantime, the first flower is going to dry a little bit, and it'll allow me to be able to give it another coat on top and ensure that the surface is covered and the uh, color is not translucent. That way, um, what shows after the piece has been fired is some bright yellow instead of seeing some of that blue show through. So it'll be a solid color all the way around. So from this point on, I'm just gonna let this roll out so you can just see how I do my first coat. I let things dry and then I move on and I go on to my second coat. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to use the small brush or you can use a medium brush. And with it, we're gonna paint the center of all the flowers with one to two coats of mochaccino. And for this step, all I did was load my brush perpendicular to the paint, just as I did for the background. And I just gently tapped the brush onto the center of the flower, kind of letting the paint pool in that center area. And I went in and painted all three of the centers first, and then I'll move on and do something else for the edges of that circle. Thank you. 
Okay, once you're getting to towards the edge of the circle or the end of the circle, um, you're going to use a small round brush and then this time you're going to load the brush the same way perpendicular to the paint and you're just gonna tap on the bristles of the brush onto the surface. Uh, for this part, what we're gonna do is just go uh, a little bit tighter towards the center of the circle. So as they kind of fan out, they get to become less. So it'll start with a lot more dots and then it'll fan out to less and less. And this is just done by gently tapping your brush onto the surface. Okay, so next we're gonna use the detail brush and two coats of pea soup to paint the laurels sticking out of the flowers. So for this step, it's pretty easy. Just kind of build the shape and then just fill in the rest. The tip for this is just to make sure that you don't overload your brush. Uh, make sure that you load as much as you can handle, that kind of thing. Um, and try to build your shape first and then go in and fill it in. So if you need to build all the leaves first and then attach them to the stem, go about it however it is the easiest for you. Once you're done painting the laurels, you're going to use um, the small brush and you're going to paint all the larger leaves with one to two coats of lime murky. Okay, so once you're done painting all your leaves with Lime Ricky, you're going to load a small amount of pea soup onto your small brush and you're going to add a brush stroke underneath the leaves as a shadow. So something you're going to see is that I'm going to um, add another coat on top of my green leaves uh, or my Lime Ricky leaves. I'm going to add another coat of Lime Ricky and then on that last coat I'm going to dip my same brush into pea soup and then I'm going to swipe the paint together. Uh, this will just be uh, creating kind of more of an artsy effect so allowing the colors to kind of blend together more naturally but you don't have to do this if you don't feel comfortable or if you're unsure about it you can always just do your two coats or your one to two coats on your leaves and then you can just add a last swipe of that pea soup the idea is just to create a dual tone on the leaves to make it so there's a light side and a dark side kind of creating more of a, of a realistic effect Okay, so next we're going to rinse off our detail brush and with it we're going to paint the teardrop shaped accents on top of the laurels with Lime Ricky. So for those, that's just the little um, green teardrops is the best thing I can explain them as or as I can call them as. It's just pretty much a shape that starts as fat and it ends skinny. So it's kind of uh, fat towards the edge of the leaf and then comes towards the uh, stem of the leaf and it becomes a little skinnier. So it's just pretty much a swipe of your brush. So if you'd like to, you can practice this part on paper, but it's just really easy and it just should be something simple that sits on top of the laurels. Okay, so next we're gonna use Q-tips or if you're like me, I prefer the back end eraser part of a pencil. Um, and with either Q-tips or that, we're gonna paint dots around the platter using chocolate mousse. So this is just to fill in some of that blank space. So feel free to add however many you like. Okay, so next we're gonna use a toothbrush or a small brush and we're gonna splatter the background with chocolate mousse. So the idea is just to uh, uh, spring the bristles back on the brush and let them splatter onto the plate. This is optional. If you don't wanna do it, you don't have to. <laughs> Give the background a few minutes to dry before we continue on to the next step. 
And the next step is going to be to use a pencil to lightly sketch the outlines of the flowers. And you can use the sample as guide. And remember that the pencil and the marker lines will disappear after the piece has been fired. So here I'm just using my finger to pass over all the pencil lines to make sure that the uh, graphite doesn't affect my painting later. Okay, so next we're going to work on outlining all of our petals with Black Lab and the Detail Brush. Uh, something to note though is that if you've painted with me before, you know that I like to add a couple droplets of water to my Black Lab paint just because it helps me have a little bit more control on the thickness of my paint. But if you don't feel like your paint is thick enough or if you feel like your paint is just okay the way it is, you're more than welcome to use it um, on. I just like to add a little bit of water to mine to just smooth it out a little bit more. Um, something to note too is if you are uh, working on uh, outlining and you feel uncomfortable or you don't sh you're not sure about how to go about it, just know that you can grab a piece of paper and you can practice on your table and practice uh, just kind of getting those motions uh, down and kind of getting more familiar with the shapes you're trying to create, that kind of thing. Remember there's no shame in warming up. Uh, I would highly suggest that you uh, get to a comfortable spot so that way you know what to do and your hand can help you along the way. Remember that whenever we're outlining and doing anything with details, uh, one hand is always holding our piece while the other one is the one that's doing the painting. Remember that the hand that is holding is the hand that will move the plate or in the piece around to ensure that the hand that's doing all the outlining doesn't have to move much, right? We want to make it as easy as possible for the hand that's doing all that heavy lifting and all that um, outlining and making sure that our lines look good and, and nice and thin and whatnot. So the best advice I can give for that is to make sure that uh, you have that hand that's outlining free to move as it wishes and as it wants. Okay, so once we're done outlining all the petals, we're going to move on to outlining all the leaves and the laurels with the detail brush and black lab. And for this part, I pretty much did the same thing, making sure that um, where my line starts, there's a little bit more pressure. And as I am ending my line, I lift my brush a little bit more, kind of end it more of a wispy line. So it should be thick to thin, that kind of thing, um, but you're more than welcome to outline however you feel the most comfortable. Remember this part is all about finalizing all those uh, brush strokes we created and all those beautiful color combinations that are there. So you're more than welcome to go about this however you like. And remember, um, you don't have to outline everything. If there's things you want to leave unoutlined, you're more than welcome to do that as well. This is your project, so I want you to be happy with what you uh, have worked so hard to create. Okay, so next we're gonna use Q-tips or we can use the eraser end of a pencil again. Um, and we're gonna paint dots inside the sunflowers with happy trails. So for this part, I'm just adding dots to the uh, mochaccino section. So I'm just going in a circle and just kind of adding dots all over that section. Just a note here is that Happy Trails is just as dark as Black Lab, so it's totally okay for you to add a couple dots on top of the black outlines. It's totally going to show up and it's going to look great. With a medium square brush, we're going to paint the rim of the platter by creating dashes with Happy Trails. To create these dashes, you're just going to load the brush and gently tap the bristles of the brush onto the rim or the edge of the platter. You're gonna skip the area next to the dash to create to make the effect look more noticeable so it's more of like uh, paint skip, paint skip, paint skip. Okay, so lastly, we're going to use the back of the small brush to add polar bear dots on top of the happy trail dots. 
on the center of the flower. So as you see, I'm just adding little dots around um, all the uh, darker brown dots. I'm just putting a little white dot on top. Alrighty, so here's a little close-up of our finished platter. Um, as you see, all the colors look kind of dull, and then once the piece has been fired, they get all brightened up. All that, all those yellows and greens look so bright and beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful piece to have all year round. So thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you had fun. Have a great day, and bye-bye.